everyone, I'm Akshay Gill, founder and director at MakerMax Inc. We specialize in products in the battery technology space. We also conduct online workshops in battery technology, which are super popular all across the world. I've been in the electric vehicle space since 2008, and before I started MakerMax, I was working for the Tesla R&D department, where I worked on the Model S, Model X, and Model 3 cars. Now in today's deep dive lesson, I want to talk about what is inside a lithium-ion cell. And before we get there, let's talk about the form factors in which lithium-ion cells are available. Now the three main form factors in which lithium-ion cells are available today are the cylindrical form factor, and in the cylindrical form factor, the 18650 form factor is the most commonly available cylindrical form factor today. The next is the prismatic form factor. And in the prismatic cell, the difference is in the way it is manufactured, it's packaged, and it is assembled. Right? The constituents, the main constituents inside a prismatic or a cylindrical lithium ion cell are the same. It's a difference in packaging and design. The third form factor which is available today is the pouch form factor. Right, so these are the three main form factors in which lithium ion cells are available today. And now let's talk about the cylindrical form factor. So let's focus on this and let's drill deep inside the cylindrical form factor to see what is really inside it. Now from the outside of the cell, what you can see, there's a positive terminal, there's a negative terminal, and then there's a cell casing which is insulated. So the positive terminal internally is connected to the cathode which is an electrode of a cell. The negative terminal is internally connected to the anode, which is also another electrode of the cell. The other two main elements inside the cell are the electrolyte and the separator. So to summarize that, there are four main constituents that are inside the cell, two electrodes, anode, cathode, and then the electrolyte, and then the separator. Now, Inside the anode, if you, if you look at the anode, there are three main parts of the anode, as well as the cathode. So an electrode is made of three main parts. These parts are the current collector, the binder, and the active material. The job of the current collector is to capture electrons and feed it outside the cell, right? The job of the binder is a sticky material that connects, electrically connects, the current collector and the active material. So the active material is where the magic happens, and this magic is termed as intercalation. So intercalation kind of works like a sponge. So think of the active material on the anode and the active material on the cathode as two sponges. These sponges have holes in them, right? So when the lithium ions flow from one electrode or one active material to the other electrode's active material, they can host themselves inside these, uh, th these, these holes or these empty spaces that are inside the sponge of the active material. And thus, and, and the main property of this is that when they do host themselves inside the active material's electrode, they're not mechanically or chemically changing that, uh, that electrode. So they can reversibly go from one electrode to the other electrode, host themselves here, and then come back and host themselves here. And this is where uh, what we term as charging and discharging of the cell. Now when the cell is completely empty, right, it's fully discharged, all the lithium ions are sitting in the cathode, and the cathode being the positive element, the positive electrode of the cell. So all the lithium ions are now in the cathode, and we now start charging the cell. So when we're charging the cell, we're feeding electrons into the cell, and lithium ions at that point are flowing from the positive element, the cathode, to the negative ele element, which is the anode. So what is happening is the active material of the cathode, when the cell is fully discharged, have all the lithium ions which are hosted inside it. We start charging the cell, which means we start giving electrons to the cell. So the lithium ions start flowing, they disassociate themselves from the cathode and start flowing towards the anode. And then start hosting themselves on the anode. Right, this is when all the lithium ions have 
flown to the anode and intercalated with the anode, we now say that the cell is fully charged. Now, the other two elements I haven't talked much about, right? The electrolyte and the separator. The separator is a special membrane that separates the anode and the cathode, and it has a very special property. That special property is that it allows only lithium ions to flow through them, not electrons. So in this way, electrons are forced to flow from the outside of the cell, whereas lithium ions are forced to flow from the inside of the cell. Right, so this is how electrons are doing the work. Whatever you connect to the external part of the cell, the electrons are flowing through, whereas lithium ions are flowing internally inside the cell. If you look at the way this is packaged, there's a roll, which we term as jelly roll. Right? And the, the reason why it's called jelly roll is because the electrolyte is a jelly and then the anode, the cathode, and the separator are kind of hosted right close to each other. So think of a large sheet of electrodes, right? So the, we first have, say, the cathode electrode. So there's a current collector, there is a binder on it, or just stuck on it, and then the active material. The active material on the cathode is usually some lithium metal oxide. Right, so that is constitutes the electrode. So think of a long sheet like that. And then there's a separator, which is the separating membrane that also electrically insulates the two, the cathode and the anode. And as I said, only allows lithium ions to flow through the small pores that it has inside it. So the cathode is there, the separator is on top, and now we have the anode. The anode also has a current collector, which is usually for cathode, the current collector is usually aluminum, and for the anode, the current collector is usually copper. So copper current collector, same binder, which is the sticky material that sticks the current collector to the active material. And on the anode, the active material is usually graphite. So that is the anode, the separator, and the cathode as sheets. Now what we're doing is we're forming a roll. We're rolling them into what is called a jelly roll, feeding electrolyte into it, and then packaging into a cell. The last part of that cell uh, connect is there's tabs that go from the cathode and connect to the positive side, which so you can ex access the, the, the cathode from the external body of the cell. And there's a tab that welds uh, uh, the anode to the negative side of the cell. I hope you enjoyed today's lesson on battery technology. I'm Akshay Gill. You can check us out at makermax.ca Thank you so much for watching and see you next time.